I call this regular meeting of the Nevada City Council to order on Monday, July 25th, 2022 at 6 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. Can we get a roll call, please? Brian Hampton. Here. Mark Hampton. Dean Nielsen. Jason Hampton. Here. Steve Gay. Here. Andy Eric. Here. First item is approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Andy Bryan. Any discussion on agenda? Seeing none, council, please vote. That is approved. Takes us um, into the first public hearing, which is a proposed amendment to the Nevada Urban Revitalization Area. Um, we'll open the public hearing on the proposed amendment to the plan for the Nevada Urban Revitalization Area. Karen or Karen or Karen, did you receive any comments? And is there anyone here to speak in the public hearing on the proposed amendment to the Nevada Urban Revitalization Act? And seeing none, we'll close that public hearing and move into resolution number four, 2022-2023, a resolution adopting amendment to the plan for the Nevada Urban Revitalization Area. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Steve Barb. Any discussion? Seeing none, council please vote. Okay, that is approved. Um, takes us into B. Uh, proposed amendment to the Nevada Urban Renewal Area. So we'll open the public hearing on the proposed amendment to the Nevada Urban Renewal Area. Did you receive any written or oral comments? No comments received. Is there anyone here to speak on the public hearing for the proposed amendment to the Urban Renewal Area? Seeing none, we will close that public hearing. We've been to resolution number five. 2022-2023, resolution of declared necessity and established in the urban renewal area pursuant to section 403.4 of the code of Iowa and approved urban renewal plan amendment for the Nevada urban renewal area. Look to approve. Second. Any discussion? Any other discussion? Council, please vote. Resolution is approved, which moves us to ordinance number 1027, 2022 2023, an ordinance providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property in the July 2022 edition to the Nevada Urban Renewal Area pursuant to section 403.19 of the Code of Iowa first reading. Second. Move to Brian and Steve, any discussion? Seeing none, council, please vote. That is approved. Um, and there's a consideration of waiving the second and third reading of orders number 1027. Okay. Is that if we waive the second and third, if we move forward? Um, wait a second, does that help a timeline? Yes, that's what the attorney said. Okay, that's that was that's why I expected it. I didn't see that. Yeah. And there was some correspondence from the bond attorney, but there's more depth than you would kind of understand. I'm not, yeah, I'm not familiar with the rationale, but. <laughs> Not putting it in the question of putting them that not might not be helpful to us down the road. In, in the past, you guys, um, the council has not typically done that. Um, I'm trying to think. Is this for the North Karen, how's the North North development? <laughs> if we win then, second, third, what's it do? I'm just trying it to helps the timeline. That's all she said when I asked. Uh, York before seeing with me about it. She said it helps the timeline, but it's not a requirement. 
So is there like a filing deadline or something against or something? Because we're getting ready to do um, okay. the agreement. Yeah. For that so property that this ordinance is designated. Yeah. So, so it just helps on the back end. It just helps. Yeah. yeah it helps on the back end so they can get the agreement in here in order for them to actually get start building and everything. So that way get up four weeks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to read which yeah one this was for. So. Yeah. Well, we've done it before. Well, we wait a second. We wait a second, third reading. You mean? Well, I know we've done that, but with it, with a motion like this, with an ordinance, with an ordinance of this regarding taxes levy, we've done that. But we rushed something like this before. I don't I think one of the issues too has been we've been waiting a long time for this agreement that's held up building. So I think that was the the one concern that I had was um, if we push this off, we get into a further a further date where they they might not be able to actually start constructing or working on the infrastructure until next next uh, spring. Right now, I think that their their plans were to start working in September of October. With this going forward, if we wait an extra four weeks, I don't know if we'll be able to do that. Would I be correct in saying the only property this affects is that specific part? Yeah, it only affects their their specific parcel. Affect it. Any of the ground? Yeah, it's just about the division for their tax purposes. Uh, they obviously don't have a problem with it. Bad precedent. Might be the first time we've done it, but I don't see what it would hurt. Can't see much of the balance of your motion at all. I have a motion to support Second that. Anything for the discussion? Seeing none, I have to please vote. <laughs> Approved takes us to resolution number six, 2022 2023, resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve an amended development agreement with Provide North America Corporation, including annual appropriation tax increment payments. Second. Ryan and Steve, discussion. Yeah. And that is approved. Takes us to resolution number seven, 2022 2023, resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve a development agreement with Provio North America Corporation, including annual appropriation tax increment payments. Okay. Second. Mandy and Steve. Seeing no discussion, how to please vote. That is approved. Um, which takes us to resolution number 8, 2022 2023, resolution setting a date of meeting at which it is proposed to approve the development agreement with Tom Richards, including. Annual appropriation tax increment payments. Second. Art and Dane. Seeing no discussion, council, please vote. That's approved. And one thing. Karen, on the, on the agenda, both items said for Bio North America, but one said for Bio and Data North America. Does that matter? Should be, should not be the North America. Should just be the Nevada. Both of these, I just want, because I read the same exact thing twice, so I wanted to make sure we were correct before we move on. Resolution number six at the top says for Bio the Data LLC. 
Thanks. Number seven says North America. Yeah, it should be for bio. Is there only one or other two? Oh, this says this says for you know, yeah. no longer they're wasting time because they won't need a the uh the file. The data. The data. Yeah. So we'll just have to update that. Yes, we should stick to an amendment and the other one is made. Right. Yes, that's how right. I yeah. Yeah. So that will move us out of the hearings into the consent agenda. Any item may be removed for such consideration. Second. Dane, Steve, any discussion? Seeing none, have to please vote. That is approved, um, which takes us into the public forum. Time to decide for comment from the public on topics of city business or other notes listed on the agenda. No action will be taken. Please keep your comments to five minutes or less. And I do have a card here um, for Renee Redkin. So you can make your way to the microphone over there and state your name and address for the record and address the council. Okay, my name is Renee Redken and I live at 41880. Um, okay, so it's been brought to my attention that our code doesn't allow beekeeping in the city limits of Nevada. And I would like um, you guys to consider changing that. Um, so I'd like to take just a few minutes of your time and give you some information about honeybees and beekeeping. Uh, so first, pollinators are an integral part of creation and very important for their survival. Um, one in three bites of food on our plates are um, depend on pollinators. Um, and honeybee colonies, as well as other pollinators, are in decline and have been declining for many years. The 2020 one statistic say 45% of managed bee colonies were lost in that time. So that's a big number. So between chemicals like um, pesticides and herbi herbicides, which kill all the naturally found plants, and cell phones and other devices that interfere with their communication skills of bees, um, we need more beekeepers for our food supply to keep up with the demand. Um, I think the main um, objective is the belief that honeybees are dangerous. And I would say the short answer to if honeybees are dangerous is actually no. Um, they get a bad rap. I think a lot of people get stung and say a bee stung me, but usually it's actually a wasp or a hornet that stings people, not honeybees. Um, honeybees don't want to sting people. Um, their stings are different. Their sting, a wasp sting goes deeper into a human flesh and they can sting you repeatedly and they're very easily aggravated. Wasps and hornets are. Honeybees are not easily aggravated and their sting is shallow and their stinger sticks in you when they sting you, so then they die. So by nature, honeybees don't want to sting people. And um, my son Lance has been maintaining his hives for two seasons now without incident or complaint. I, we weed eat by the hives, we mow by the hives. Um, I stand right next to him without a bee suit on while he's inspecting his hives and I've never been stung. So I think that's all evidence that they're just not aggressive as some might have previously thought them to be. Um, Beekeepers wear suits because they are in their hive. And that's basically if a honeybee stings you, it's because you are actually in their hive, messing with their hive, and they feel a threat by you. But um, other than that, you're not likely to be stung. Other neighboring cities, like Ames, Ankeny, and Des Moines, 
um, recognize that um, these aren't dangerous and allow beekeeping in your city limits. Um, you can go to the Iowa Honey Producers Association page and for a quick reference to all the city's codes and what they say on beekeeping, which is where I found our Suicide Bee and have them. Uh, also, not everyone can be a beekeeper, so approval to allow beekeeping within city limits would not cause a huge explosion of honeybee population. The cost alone will deter many people from doing it. Just to keep um, an initial hive maintained is about $1,000 just for one to get started. And then um, the expense goes up from there, especially if you want to extract honey. Honey extractors aren't cheap. And um, selling honey doesn't yield profit, especially at a hobby level beekeepers um, level of keeping bees that um, for like a really, really long time if it ever yields profit at all because the expense is more than the, what you would get selling the honey. Um, it also takes a, like hundreds of hours each year to educate yourself um, to actually be able to keep your bees happy and healthy. Many beekeepers are not successful. So many people, when they invest the money, they just lose it all because they can't figure out how to actually keep the bees alive. Um, I would say that my son Lance has invested over 500 hours educating himself, which is huge for a year, like to be interested in something like that. Um, since December of 2020, when we got his first hive kit, and keeping in mind we didn't know it was the um, So yeah, I'd say that's really great for youth to be interested in something like that. I know, um, like I think that's something that he could do with the FFA if it was allowed in the city limits too, which would be cool. Um, also, so a thought might be that, well, he could just keep them somewhere else in the country, but actually beekeepers need to be near the bees. Um, beekeeping requires weekly hive checks at a minimum, at least once a week that you're getting into your bees. During the spring, summer, and fall, you can't just ignore your bees uh, or they will die. There are many factors working against honeybee survival, and as a beekeeper, you maintain a huge reliability and responsibility to maintain your hives. You have to thoroughly visually inspect them. Um, and youth, like my son, can't do that if he doesn't live near his hives. So um, keeping the current ordinance makes it pretty much impossible for young people to live who live in Nevada to take care of bees or have an interest in this really great hobby. Um, <laughs> or just being outdoors in general is really good for young people. And then the final point I'd like to make is that some studies have shown consuming raw local honey is good to reduce allergy symptoms. And local in this case is usually defined as less than five miles than where you live. Um, and so Nevada as a community has done a really good job of getting the message out about how important um, being a local consumer for our community is to contribute um, to our economy and for the data to continue to thrive. And changing this ordinance aligns with our community values about the environment, our youth, and being a local consumer. So um, I'm not going to pretend I understand how all the government works, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it changed. Um, Thank you for your time and consideration. And I did take the liberty to print off some of the local ordinances for you guys to read what they have. And then I brought samples that you can take advantage of. From that. <laughs> so this is your honey. That, that's Lance's honey. Yes. But he's invested a lot of time and he has invested a lot of resources. Thank you. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, yes, definitely. Can you send us all that information? I printed out a shortened version of it right there for you. That was a business? Yes. Okay. okay. My next question is why? I got your, well, why do you want to have these? I mean, I get all this. I get, you know, you know, I get all this. What you're saying. Really, why do you want to have these? Just because? Because it's fun? You like it? Interested? I'm going to ask Lance. Yeah, I was saying, answer that question. That'd be great. Yeah. 
You can stay. I can talk about how different from here. So I just at first I was just I don't know, just kind of happened, but I young yeah, just enjoy it a lot now. I like the money it takes to awesome, all that. It's just fun hobby for me, really. That I've just been enjoying. So how many bees do you have? Uh, right now I have six hives, and it's hard. I, if you look at all of you, how many how many bees are hives? Uh, I don't yeah, remember the exact number on the head, but it's usually a package of what you start your hive with. Has somewhere around what is it seven thousand? I think it's seven to fifteen thousand, depending. But then no, like you can't yeah. say how many bees are in each hive because each hive is in a different stage of development. No, that's, that's but it, it's it's a lot of bees, but it shouldn't be a problem of any sort because the only time somebody would get stung or anything like that is if you're out in the hives and screw them, which they shouldn't be in our yard screwing the hives. Yeah, when he was really little, he came to me like every summer from the time of age eight on, Mom, Mom, you know what we should do? We should have bees. And so then I deprived him two years ago by giving him a basic hive kit for his birthday. And it's a huge passion for him. Him, and I think it's it'd be great for other people to be interested in, but it's not something that everybody can do. So. What's your guys' address? 41883. Oh, Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. okay. I yeah. actually think I've seen some of your bees because I actually seen them be on the cucumber flowers, but I've never really seen them in honeybees in my garden. Oh, but. do you live near us? Tough lots, Lori. Tough lots, yeah, they might go that far. Sure. They're very good pollinators. Yeah. I got lots of people for growing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this today there was information about um, beekeeping and a master beekeeping program that's being developed by the University of Nebraska Lincoln. That um, sounds like fit really well with what Lance is trying to because they kept talking about all the hours required because everything becomes a little shifting. Maintain the health of the bees. Um, but yeah, that was like maybe one o'clock hour. But it sounds like a lot of the uh, the correspondence and the groups um, from time to time and how we keep So just curious, have you had complaints? No, we, yeah, this is our second season and we haven't had any complaints from any of our neighbors or um, anything. So and yeah, I mean, I'm willing to do whatever. We need to have a public forum. So can we get entomologists here? I'm sure. Or whatever. I mean, okay, so is there interest from council to run it back? Well, I think at this point we have to. I mean, she's got bees. <laughs> like I told her, she called, to be fair, she called me about it. And I said, you know, this is what you need to confirm. And, uh, and I told her, we're not going to send PD out tomorrow after she talks to get her bees out. But I think we need to address it, whatever we're going to do. Um, so I think we need, yeah. I'd like to see a little more out, a little more, but I think we need to do a little more research and make sure what everyone else is doing. I, mean, I can't, I, I would say I'm totally not against it. I mean, we allow chickens, and, but we probably need to address it again. Kind of like the other stuff we address, it's, it's pretty diligent, please. And if Ed told me on the way here, he got his first bee kit, so now I know where to go ask questions. That's a great way to learn about the bees first. So. Thank you for bringing it forward. Sounds like you have consensus from council to bring it back as an action item. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the public forum, is there anyone else here to speak in the public forum? This me. Don't take very long. Okay. We'll have you go up there, Louise. Okay. This one question I want to ask is like, I know people have been wondering, uh, I heard that we go ahead and come to place this fall. No. no. No, the intention is still not to have one this year. We have to figure a lot of things out, so there will not be one in the fall. 
So you still uh, you're not against the lights? No, council still I think has the intent to bring it back. Staff still working on it, but we just are not going to have an option for you here this year. We we are still working. On it. We are trying to find a viable solution for a, for a spot for that. But as of right now, we we don't have any spots. And the current spot that we were using or that was able, we can't right now because of the construction that's happening. So it, it is something that we're we're discussing and we're trying to figure out options, but it is something that we probably will not be able to get to this year. But you uh, in favor of not, you know, not against it in favor. Yeah, we're, no, yeah. I don't think anyone here is against it now. Okay, and then number two is on uh, is on uh, green machine. It just puts down to water and the need to put asphalt down to water better than the rock is stick better. I understand they do. The city does have a roller that will smooth out. Because before they used to just like a shovel that will put it down. But they use a roller in the city. Please, they do have a roller. I'll, uh, I'll share that with our street supervisor and we'll talk to him about that. Thank you for the suggestion. And I'm glad that we're going to get one street done next year. So I understood. Well, uh, what was Let's that? make it one street done next year. But the streets are bad. The streets, yeah. We're, yeah. we're trying to work through an actual street management plan so we can come up with a, uh, an actual plan on how we're going to tackle each street at a time. Yeah, you I realize that there are some that we need to be replacing. I think one time I gave you that paper and stuff to speak up to that. Yeah, you did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, that's why I hope somebody said I'm going to get one time next year. Try. Appreciate right. it. Okay. Other public comments in the public forum? Seeing none, we'll close the public forum. We'll go to old business. Business A approve HR Green Amendment to Master Agreement for Municipal Engineering Services for F14 Water Main Relocation Project not to exceed $10,000. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Barb and Steve. Any discussion? Seeing none, have a please vote. Approved takes us to B. Approve HR Green Amendment Number One for 2022 Street Improvements, originally 2021 Street Improvements for Design of Sanitary Sewer Extension on S14, maximum community four thousand dollars. Approved. Second. Jason. Any discussion? Seeing none. Have to please vote. Take it to C, resolution number 11, 2022-2023, resolution approving the Story County Housing Trust Grant Agreement with the City of Nevada, Iowa. Second. Seeing and Steve. Discussion? Seeing none, come, please vote. That is approved. Takes the new business with resolution number 12, 2022-2023, a resolution to approve the MOU with call of fire department for fire extinguisher training prop. Second. Brian and Barbara. Discussion. Seeing none, council please vote. Who makes work on that, Ray, by the way? That is approved. Um, takes us to B, ordinance number 1023, 2021, 2022, for the ordinance amending the city code in the Beta Isle by adding chapter 158, property maintenance and residential rental code, first reading amended. Second. Brian, Steve, discussion. I'll say that Brian did a nice job with many public hearings working through this one. 
I know Aaron with the Trevor revisions too. Seeing no discussion, Council, please vote. It's a C resolution number 13, 2022 2023, resolution authorizing development agreement with WD Realty Company LLC. Move to approve. Second. Dane and Jason. Seeing no discussion, council, please vote. It's E resolution number 14, 2022 2023, a resolution approving the Beta Foundation Human Services Fund Agreement. Second. So, on that, too, we had an auditor pre meeting on the last audit. They brought up human services again um, and keep contradicting their own office's opinions on it. Um, so, the way we left it is we were going to send them a copy of this agreement. Um, before we get all the way down the road, but we were moving forward with the last statement they put out to craft it. So that's where we are. To revisit it again. Yeah. We might have to. I have no like doubt. Ground, ground no. Day. I have no doubt we will look at this again. I got an email asking if I need to abstain as someone that might be applying for this fund. Do I need to abstain from this? I, I need to catch this check in the Oh. Um. <laughs> We said better safe than sorry. You don't yeah. necessarily need to, but you might as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I will definitely get some data for that. Yep. <clears throat> no discussion? Seeing none, Council, please vote. Okay. Approved. Takes us to resolution number 15, 2022-2023. Resolution setting date for public hearing on designation of the expanded Nevada urban renewal area and on urban renewal plan amendment. Jason, discussion. Seeing none, council please vote. That is approved. Takes us to the action form of discussion appropriate follow up regarding ATV and UTV ordinance. You have a recommendation from public safety and city staff regarding planning on coming to back. No, for discussion here. I'll uh, then make a motion to approve option one. All right. Dane, Jason, discussion. Let's have any questions about anything? Not from the staff side. A lot, of, a lot of the concerns that uh, staff feel that uh, we can either work through with the ordinance or we talk with other communities and they weren't really concerned after speaking with them. So uh, that's kind of how I was kind of finishing through with it. Is we'll be able to work through any of the issues that may come up. Yeah, it seems like there's been enough experience in other communities out there. It's just not going to turn into a huge problem. Uh, we won't fix it. And we had a subcommittee after the last meeting to talk about it. I want to move Scott and Anderson to maintain all of this ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No further discussion. Council, please vote. While we're still on the topic, um, if you still, Brian and, and Steve, were we still okay with doing two separate ordinances, one with the golf carts and then a separate one with UT, EAT? Yeah, that's, I believe, what I recommended. Yep. Yeah. 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 I did send the in, Indian all over to Aaron's, I said that as a reference. Um, so I should be able to. 
I didn't see it up there, but I assume it was approved. Yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Boys vote then. Or did you want to roll call or boys? Thanks. Okay. We'll do a roll call. Brian Hansen. Aye. Barb Whitman. Aye. Dane Nielsen. Aye. Jason Sampson. Aye. Steve Skagg. Aye. Andy Eric. Aye. And that is approved. And then Dora will be in touch with the subcommittee for in detail. Um, so that will move us into reports starting with city administrator. All right. Uh, so Brett mentioned that we had a meeting with the auditors this last week. Uh, the other thing that I did was I reached out to Scott Tin, who is with the Iowa State Extension and Outreach Office, he deals with the economic development side of things. Uh, he does a lot of strategic planning, and that was one of the things I was tasked with was creating some sort of a uh, strategic planning session with council members. Uh, so he just wanted to know some more information from you guys what time frame if you wanted to do it on a time period, three month separate meetings. So I kind of just wanted me to get a little bit more information what would work best with you guys so he can take that back to his team and create some sort of schedule that I can send out to you guys and figure out what works with everybody's schedule. I guess my feeling is the sooner the better and the shorter the time frame. We have so much there that we have that 2040 to work from. So I do a lot of that. Yeah. In the past for strategic planning, we've done like an afternoon and then Karen has been around for a few because normally we've met in the afternoon and gone through dinner and had like half a day. It's very over the years. Sometimes we've met for supper, like and done it like over a supper meal and done it then or it's really up to I remember right, it was like a half, like a four hour type time frame that's normally what we spend on I'll uh, relay some information to them and hopefully get something back and we'll go from there. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about was community copies. I didn't know if we were to set up specific topics for each month and then have a certain council member uh, pick those those topics or, or have a council member pick a topic and then you know, set that date for their, their uh, community copy headline. Personally, I thought it was a lot better when we had a specific when we were doing the Zoom and all this We did, and we got more, we get a lot more outreach on Zoom, so it could also be that we do a topic on Zoom and still let people come ask whatever they want in person. Yeah, absolutely. I think that works. Yeah. So probably what we need is for staff and council to help identify what timely topics people care about are. So that'll get them to, to watch, and then we can. It's pretty easy to go back to set up those zooms. But and those got, I don't know if they would be the same viewership now that the world is back open again as they did before, but each one got thousands of views. I can have Marvel's kind of go through and figure out what you know, topics would be most popular or relevant and set up a schedule of events for that. I think it should be like, so what are people, what are the questions we're getting? Mm -hmm. So like, I noticed lately we have some things on driving in the garage or stuff like that. Yeah. You just probably need to review some yeah. of the things that are standouts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I've been getting some staff on those. It's yeah, it's very helpful. We can use the Zoom ones. We can actually talk at that level. Okay. All right, other than that, uh, I had my report that I sent in. If you have any questions, I'd be, great. I'd be happy to answer them. But other than that, I don't have anything more. And then speaking of that, the next community coffee in uh, August 13th. I don't know if any of you were able to attend, but 
to like the temple secret center. Uh, we did ask Marlos to push that out and promote it. That was so cool to see it. Just a hunger. So we have Dane so far. So I was playing to go and we'll have a few of us probably. Okay. Anything for Jordan? Okay, moving on to my report. So I brought up the auditors, and one of the pieces that we do for the auditors is reviewing the stack of check transactions every meeting. And so I asked them if there are other ways to do it or things because that's something I know I have to take care of massive stack stacks at a time if I get behind on doing that. And they actually said they they think it's a better control if more elected officials are involved in that process because you get more eyes on it. So I was going to bring it up and see if all of you would be willing to take a round and then we each look at it every seven weeks or seven meetings. So every what, 14 weeks you get a stack. But that was bringing up for discussion. So what are we doing with the stack? So basically for the auditors, we an elected official has to go through and look at all the checks that go out and compare it to the invoice and make sure that the money is spent appropriately and we have an invoice board and it looks like a legitimate expense. And then you put your initial on it and move to the next one. How much time does it take? An hour or so? Probably about an hour yeah. for each meeting. You do it every night, maybe only five minutes a night. <laughs> <laughs> sounds amazing. I will let it. Sure, sure. Yeah. Whatever we need to do. Yep. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's her like over here. Okay. So if you really don't want to do it, then you don't have to. We'll just adjust the rotation, but that'll take some pressure off me so they can get back to the staff soon. Okay. Then we'll we'll work with Karen on a little schedule and yeah, so get, yeah. get everybody a, a stack. Um otherwise. Um, you know, walkability, bikeability, there's the Healthy Hometowns coming in to do that assessment. Um, I went out with Tim and Jordan looking at, at some things too, and I talked about some of the priorities about you know, looking at where we have highly trafficked areas that have some gaps. Like, um, you know, if you're going to the trail and there's sidewalk 85% of the way and there's one property without, you know, kind of where to fill in our sidewalks now that we've gone through and fixed up most of the existing, you know, other key gaps in high traffic areas. Um, just kind of really looking for some of that low hanging fruit to connect things. And then in addition, you know, from, there you go. Yeah. And then also then, you know, from a park and rec perspective, you're looking at the actual recreational system and then you have more of the, the street side. So it's kind of two sides to look at it from, but I think that's, that's exciting about what we can do over time. And then we got done and said, man, there's a lot <laughs> that could be done. So hopefully we can start shipping away at that. Um, so as you all have ideas too, we want to get those in or as the public have like, areas that they notice because people who are out and about might notice things more too that we might miss. So keep sending in those things. Um, otherwise, Pizza Pilooza um, has formed an actual committee so that will take some pressure off some city staff um, with some roles on that too. So um, there was a committee before, but now there's some defined roles and I think that will help going forward. Um, another good mix and mingle that was down um, at the old hotel, Blue Moon and the hair studio that are in there. And they did a nice job with that. And then lastly, the alumni group for the alumni weekend met with the foundation and they're looking for some younger alumni that have good ideas to get involved because they really want to, to look at it fresh um, to bring more alumni back and I think that would be very valuable for the community to celebrate those folks come back home. So in your networks we know of Nevada alumni who are on the younger side. Um, they want to really get those folks in and um, listen to them and carry out some of those things because that's one of the things you know the foundation board has said they're going to get involved if they feel like they can make a difference so um and the, the group's really looking for that they want to want to freshen things up and make sure that their younger class is being involved so that's it for my report i think do you have anything for me okay then council reports
Okay, we will continue in the back of the room. Brenda, do we have any report from the agency? I don't have a report today. Okay, great. Real briefly, uh, we're excited August 1st and August 3rd to have an opportunity to go down to West Morning Fire Department. Uh, they're doing a sprinkler operation class so that we can educate people on what a sprinkler is and what it isn't. Uh, also, we'll be doing a tour of the Valley Junction area and how they've done a shared name through the, the Valley Junction. Uh, people always talk about costs when we talk about sprinklers. What they don't talk about is that you can put any business into a sprinkler occupancy. So when we're trying to match people coming into our community, uh, we can take that, is this the right uh, place for you, right out of the discussion because anybody is eligible for a sprinkler today. So that's a huge economic win. And they're seeing it in Valley Junction, they're actually even spreading to two more buildings. So I'm excited uh, Jordan's gonna go. Uh, Henry Corbin's going on the first. Um, I just bent Brenda's arm and she'll be going the third. And uh, uh, Dave Sly is working on his schedule to go as well. As you know, the uh, Camelot Theater will be the first Franklin historic building in our town. So uh, that'll open up those apartments upstairs. So that's really exciting. Uh, the other thing is the police department, we're gearing up for Iowa State football. Our officers enjoy working the overtime there. And uh, it's kind of a unique experience. So. Um, if you hear anything, that's that's what's going on. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan. Uh, I'll have a special use permit coming across uh, your guys' plate next week, and then a uh, new zoning one as well. Uh, we've had. Quite a few permits turned in the last two weeks for projects to try and finish up the last of the season. So fence and decks and stuff like that. Any questions? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, we'll be doing a another uh, meeting over the vacant building on August first at six thirty. We had a couple people show up last time. It was really good discussion I felt like so um, quite a few people on board for it. Any other questions? <coughs> As we come to kind of close of summer here, um, just to let you know uh, pool closes August 21st for some of my so um, but when we get the first of the month, we're going to start to um, lose a lot of our staff. So we'll do our best to keep the pool open, but there will be areas of the pool that won't be available all day every day. So if you do hear questions or concerns, please have those folks reach out to us, and we're happy to visit with you. So um, other than that, the field house project is off and rolling. Um, the work started last week, and uh, which is a couple weeks earlier than expected, so that's a good thing. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'll say I'll improve the next four to fifteen. Any questions? Great. Have a good evening. Thanks. I just want to follow up from a question two weeks ago uh, when we were referencing fireworks. I had our communications center check from 2021 to 2022. In 2021, we had 21 calls for service related to that during the October, uh, June, and July timeframe. 
talk to a good uh, next one. Aaron attended Clerks Institute uh, last week, and I'll be attending the Clerk Academy this Wednesday for five. I, as Karen said, most of the last week I spent at Clerk School. Um, it was very interesting. Um, it was good. Um, good, but more predictive than that. Um, so, it was very, very helpful to go to a place like that and have um, real life experiences that I got here. So, it's been good. Okay. The only thing I'd like to uh, mention to you is on the S14 sanitary sewer extension and the completion of the street work. I had hoped to have a change order for you at this meeting, but I'm lacking some of the information from the county. Um, because of that additional work, there was a concern on the contractor's part that being able to get all of that work done and get the street work done before winter sets in. And that would be the worst case scenario would be the road shut the moment through the entire winter. So um, to address some of the items that the council has expressed about closing that road in the fall with school buses and, and uh, crops and all that stuff, um, we're, we're negotiating with the contractor to have that work done that summer. And there's no immediate need to improve that road. And there's some great benefits to having it done while school is not in session. So that's what we're trying to negotiate is starting that work June 1st and completing it before August 23rd, which I believe is the earliest in school. So, and uh, I've talked to both Brian and Jason about that. And they, they're, they're both somewhat relieved uh, to get that done in the summer. And the contract is very uh, willing to do that. So we have to negotiate some things on that. There are obviously some costs that will go up by them, rock, uh, labor, that type of thing. Um, to soften some of the effect that's being proposed that the city will probably pay for any stored items. Um, the, the most difficult part of getting some of that stuff is getting the pipe for the sanitary sewer work, getting all the structures for the sanitary sewer, and that type of thing. So if we can get all of that on site, get it stored, and it's ready to go on June 1st, we can get the work done in three months pretty easy. So that's where negotiated. Uh, hope to have a change order for you at the next council. Okay. That's all I have to report. Probably be good not to have to listen to the school transportation guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything, anything else for Larry's report? Okay. Aaron. Okay. Council, anything else before we adjourn? I do have one thing that I forgot to mention that's pretty exciting. The Power Rural Iowa and Power Rural Development Council have chosen the beta for the December 14th meeting. Awesome. We were just in Winterstead last week with about 100 people from all over the state. So I'll be asking Brenda to meet with Henry to meet with the mayor and Jordan. So we'll be together. Steve already said he can do anything. So. Anything. But it's a great opportunity to showcase and we'll get to do show and tell along with their meeting for quite a bit here. So we go with Lurch Trust. Just like all this again. Kirk, you can help me. But you were saying you were gonna get it. Oh no, you said you do it. You have the best urge face. Oh on that. Who's up? Yeah. Yeah. Second. Dane and Brian, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye.